Hey guys, it's Cody from Double C Custom Leather. Um, we're going to do a short video today showing you how to do the saddle stitch when you're stitching a holster. Um, if you have a sewing machine, more power to you. You don't need to learn this stitch, um, but it is good to know. Um, most of us out there doing holsters are using a saddle stitch. Hand stitching is the way to go um, when it comes to holsters. It's a lot stronger stitch. Um, I think it looks a whole lot better. Um, it's going to last, especially with something like a holster that's, that's got a lot of abrasive places that are, that are contacting your clothes, your skin, and it's causing it to wear away at that thread. Um, usually, if you bust every third, every other stitch in a saddle stitch, it'll still hold its, hold its integrity. Um, so we'll get started by talking about the thread. Um, we're using a one millimeter tiger thread. Okay, um, this particular color is cream. Uh, the holster we're gonna be doing it on is a holster for a, it's a right-handed pancake style outside the waistband for a 1911. Um, it's got a uh, tensioner screw as well as an inlaid piece of uh, ostrich leg. I do a lot of exotics. Um, if you guys wanna see some more exotics um, done, let me know in the comments. We'll show you how to do some of that. <clears throat> so when you get started, I'm just using these Tandy um, blunt tip needles. Um, they're hand stitching needles, a uh, couple bucks for a 10 pack. I usually buy them by the 100 because I tend to break a lot of them. So um, how I normally start is I take my thread through the eye of my needle. I hope you guys can see this. Okay. And then leave yourself enough of a tail here. You're going to want to go back through your thread with your needle. And then pull tight. It makes kind of a slip knot. Now with the saddle stitch, you can, you can use one one needle and stitch um, and just do a regular old stitch go through one side back through the other um, I use a saddle stitch I use two needles so you're gonna do that on both ends of your thread okay so you're gonna end up with two needles one in each hand and as you're stitching you're gonna be using both needles okay so we'll go ahead and turn this tripod around we'll get started I'll show you guys how to do this all right guys we're ready to get started for the sake of the video I have my holster clamped into my stitching vise or stitching pony um, and then that is clamped to my bench um, normally when you do this if you've seen a stitching pony before you would actually sit on it like you would sit on a pony um, and you would stitch between your legs um, for the sake of the video just so you guys can see it I've got it stitched here um, and we'll go ahead and get started I'm gonna show you how to start the stitch show you how to run the stitch and then we'll show you how to end the stitch okay when you start you're always gonna want to start on the top or outside part of whatever you're stitching because when we end we want to end right there and we want to go through between the two pieces of leather to actually complete our stitch that way it looks really neat and tidy and no uh, ends of threads hanging out so to go ahead and start <clears throat> you take your one needle go through your hole okay and what I'm doing off frame here is just evening up the threads on both sides remember I have a needle on both sides of the of the holster so now on the back side I have my needle on the front side I have my needle I always stitch towards me there's some guys who stitch away um, that's how I've started doing it I just found it a lot easier to do that way so I'm going to show you a couple different angles here but to start our stitch we're just going to go ahead and start our first stitch go through the hole and these holes were punched with a, um, a stitching fork guys so if, uh, if you're doing it with an awl you're obviously going to be punching your holes as you go so I always leave a loop out. There's some guys who pull it tight, some that tend to um, make big loops, some that make small loops. That's about the size loops I like to use. Um, and so what I, what I did there is I went through the front hole, and then with my needle from the opposite side, I went through the back hole. And when we show you guys a, a, a straight-on view, you'll be able to see that in a little better. So when we pull our stitch tight, I usually pull the front stitch up and towards myself. Okay, that kind of creates a slant in your stitch, and it makes all your stitches look uniform. If you pull straight to yourself, your stitches will look straight, and then when you do get a wonky stitch, it will stand out. So we're back through the front hole <clears throat> with our second needle in from the back. Now, if you, feel, if you feel yourself go through your thread, back your needle out, pull your thread to the side of your hole, and restart that stitch. We'll pull our pull our stitch tight, and you see how neat and tidy those stitches are. Now I did use a stitch groover on these, um, as well as a, a diamond chisel punch. Um, 
stitching fork, some people call it. Now I always go above my loop. If my loop somehow goes below, I kick it down. You'll see guys that go through the loop every time. This is how I do it. I'm not saying what they're doing is wrong. This is just my way of doing it. And it's always worked for me. My holsters hold up. I got customers that come back and get holsters once a month. So if it works, why change it? So I'm just going to run a few stitches that you guys kind of see the rhythm. Normally I do this a lot faster. Now if, if you're having trouble pulling your pulling your needle through, you can always use your pliers. Don't be afraid to go to those if you need to. Through the front. Through the back. Pull it tight to your body and up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop that there. We're gonna switch views here and I'll show you guys what it looks like from a different angle. All right guys, so we're gonna do this from the straight on angle. I'm just gonna do a few stitches. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up and show you guys how to, how to finish the stitch up. So we're going through the front. And this side here is the front of my holster so you guys know. I always go through the front first. Some people go through the back, then the front. Like I said, there's no right way to do this. This is my way of doing it. So through. Now this needle is going to, I'm going to hold on to this needle so that way you guys can see. This is the needle I just put through. I'm going to my opposite needle. guys so if you'll see we've got our stitch ran all the way around I did that off frame so you guys didn't have to watch me stitch the entire thing um, which brings me to a point guys my my vice stayed right here this entire time I actually stitched it without the vice I do that a lot um, so you don't need a stitching pony to get good stitches um, if you just watch what you're doing you can do it handheld I've I've taken it to work I've done it going down the road um, in a, in a you know on a road trip or something like that not while driving of course but um you know you don't have to you can stitch pretty much anywhere so um if you're out on the couch watching tv great time to stitch some projects um so we've finished our stitch all the way around okay we're about to go back into the hole that we started at so what we're going to do is we're going to go into that hole and finish up the stitch just like you normally would Okay, this might be a little bit tougher to pull your needle through. This is where you might need your needle nose. I'm going to try to do this without them. Um, if I can. So, and if you need to, you can always take your needle, wiggle it back and forth. This is how I break needles all the time, by the way, guys. So, if you only got 10 needles, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, so, once you go through and you get your stitch, it might be a little bit harder to pull through just because you have that, that last stitch in there. Um, I backstitch at least two spots. Sometimes I go a little bit more depending on what kind of item it is. Usually on the holsters I do two. So you're going to go backwards and stitch back through. Same way. Using the same saddle stitch technique. You can go back through the hole with your front stitch. Back through that hole with your back stitch. Okay. That's going to create... Here I was saying I wasn't going to use my needle nose, but that is tight. Now, when you do this, I typically go the other way. That way my stitches lay side by side. I don't If they lay on top of each other, it just tends to stick out over top of the stitch groove. And it can cause your stitch to braid 
a little bit more. So we're going back to that second hole. Okay, we'll finish that stitch up. Now this is where I was talking about your picking your starting point wisely. Now if we would have started that stitch over here, yeah, we would have been on the outside, would have been fine. Um, but when we back stitch two holes, we'd be on the inside, we wouldn't be able to finish our stitch. So I usually start somewhere in the middle of an outside edge. Um, that's just a good way to start. So I'm gonna go back up through this hole. We've done our two back stitches. I'm gonna go back up this hole and go through the first layer of leather only. This is tough to do while this is at this angle. But we'll make it happen. So you see how I'm coming up through between the two layers of leather? And we'll pull that up. Okay, lay that thread to the side with your back thread. Do the same thing on the opposite side. Through the back layer of leather, the back of your holster per se. And then up through, I like to tug on that thread a little bit, make sure I didn't stab my thread, up through the two layers of leather. Now if you have three layers of leather that can get a little bit more difficult, we might do a separate video on that for like a knife sheath with a welt or something of that nature. So now you have your two threads coming up between your two layers of leather. I take just do one overhand knot, so take your two threads, tie a knot together, okay, and run that knot all the way down and then pull it tight and it'll sink itself in between those two layers of leather. That's how we get such a neat stitch. That's how we don't have any end spots. We don't have to snip a stitch and burn it back or anything like that. Now we will snip these and burn these just to get the ends melted together. So I usually about this much snip and now you have two pieces of thread sticking up through your, through your holster. Okay, I'll take those two pieces of thread, twist them together. Get your scratch awl and your Bic lighter. Light that like a candle wick. Burn it all the way down till it's almost flush and then take your awl and shove that burnt piece in between the two layers of leather and pinch the leather together okay so now you finish your entire stitch you're good to go there um, again guys I was using just one millimeter tiger thread. tiger thread is the shit when it comes to holster making um, it's very very strong it's got a really high tensile strength it's super tough um, it's expensive and uh, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna buy a good bit of it because you do need more than what your length of stitch is. Um, there's a equation two and a half times your length of stitch. So um, basically you want enough, enough to go around this two times plus some. I always give myself about three times uh, my length of stitch just because I like to have a little extra um, just because you never know. Now you can splice two stitches together. I can show that in a separate video. If anybody wants to see that, leave me a comment, let me know. Um, otherwise you guys like and subscribe and uh, keep following us for more tips and tricks and I'll show you guys some other cool stuff. Until then, you guys have a good night.